Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Cassie. So glad you're back here on my YouTube channel. Today I am doing a collaboration with a friend of mine, Carrie Rhodes. She's fantastic and I'll have that information listed down below, but let's talk about what we're going to be using. I am going to be using the Bunny Burrows stamps and dies and I'm pairing that up with the Mouse House stamps and dies. Uh, mostly because they just need to go together. I mean, look at them. Don't they need to go together? And I'm also going to be using the Slimline Scenic Borders. So let's go ahead and get started with our coloring. I went ahead and stamped out all of the images onto some um, Copic Friendly cardstock, and I stamped that out with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm starting off with these light green colors. I went ahead and chose some colored cardstock for my background, and that's kind of how I started choosing the colors for you know how I'm coloring. So I like to put down a base color first. So that's what you get with that G21. And sorry, those aren't all on screen. I will try and mention them as I use them. And I'm sloppily putting color down. That's basically how I color. <laughs> um, and I think I've mentioned that before. And I think I mentioned that before when I was coloring this image in particular. Uh, but you know, we all have our own style and it's, it's fun. How boring would the world be if we all did the same things, right? So as I mentioned earlier, I am doing a collaboration. So Carrie has been, and for as long as I've watched her, she typically does a stamp set a month. And what that means is she'll grab a stamp set that she likes or that she lets her viewers vote on. And then she will do one project or, you know, one card, sometimes it's more than one, per week using that stamp set. And I'm telling you, that girl goes above and beyond. If you buy one of the stamp sets that she uses, you get lots and lots of ideas. Uh, and so we were just kind of chatting and we had mentioned that, hey, we both got the same things. And so we thought, why don't we collaborate and see if we can give even more ideas for these stamp sets that we just love so much. And so that is how this collaboration was born. Um, I believe she is definitely using the Bunny Burrow. I'm not sure if she's using the Mouse House as well, but she is definitely using the Bunny Burrow. That is her stamp set of the month this month. And I've already watched the ones that she has so far of this stamp set, and you won't be disappointed. So I'm going to have her linked down below so that you can go check out um, what she's been doing with this particular set. And like I said, you're not going to be disappointed. Meeting Carrie and getting to know her has just been such a joy. I love the crafting community for so many reasons. Obviously, we all have a love of stamping uh, when we're in this particular community. And so that's one thing we have in common. But oftentimes we find that there's even more that we have in common. And one of the things that Carrie and I have in common is that our husbands have a military background. Um, we were both also homeschooling before it was cool <laughs> or before people were forced to do it. <laughs> uh, and we also like to camp. So I swear this girl and I are like sisters from another mister. So uh, it has been fun to get her to know her. I hope someday, just like with a lot of y'all, I hope someday that I get to meet her in person. All right, so we're going to move on to coloring our little um, mouse house one now. And I love this because it has all these little mushrooms in it. And so I think that's another reason why I was so drawn to it is because of the mushrooms. Once again, I'm putting down a base color for my little tree trunk here, uh, which is kind of unnecessary, I think. I mean, some of you might think it's unnecessary. I like to put that down because it keeps the paper a little bit moist. It also can have a tendency to add to the color that you put on top because alcohol markers can, uh, well, they're, they're transparent in a sense that when you layer them up, the color underneath oftentimes shows, uh, unless you're going darker over lighter sometimes. So in this case, it will add a little bit more of an orangey yellow tint to that brown that I'm putting on top. And then I'm going to come in with some E37, and that will be my darkest shade. And then I'll even clean up those edges a little bit more later. Um, I'm not going to show you the coloring of every single image because we'd be here for days, but uh, I am going to show you how I color one of the mice because it's all basically the same. Lately, when I've been making cards, I seem to pick out about three colors that I tend to go for with the cards. In this particular case, I chose like that sage kind of green or a mossy green. I chose dark red and I also chose like orangey browns. And um, so that that's basically my thought process with that. I'm going to go in and do a little flicking on the green that I did 
and I'm probably not going to blend that out. I'm going to let that either just sit there like that or do a little bit of its own blending. And then I'm going to come in with the red that I chose for my mushrooms. You know, it's killing me because I actually do have some mushroom embellishments and I didn't end up using any of those on this particular card, which is kind of sad, but it has plenty of mushrooms on it. So I figured I didn't need to add any more. Uh, and so I'll just continue on with using these reds. I'm going to color the door red and I chose R37 as my lightest shade. R39 was my second shade, my mid-tone, and then R89 was actually my darkest shade. I'm bringing in some E43 and some E44, and then I'll blend those out just a little bit. But I like how that golden orangey brown really makes the other colors pop. And then we'll move on to our other mushrooms. And we're going to do the same thing with those. We'll start with that R37, put that down first, come in with that R39, and then R89, just to deepen that up just a little more, and then we'll blend that out. Then I've got the E43, and to lighten that up quite a bit on those dots and on the stem of the mushroom, I'm going to use my colorless blender. And then we'll move on to our mouse. I wanted him to be like almost a combination of gray and brown. So we've chosen E81 as my lightest color. Then we're going to come in with E43. And then we'll blend that out with the E81 again. So he sort of looks like he's a gray brown mouse. And then for his ears, I'm going to bring in some RV17. Just a tiny pop of that. And then I'll blend it just a tiny bit with the colorless, colorless blender. We'll bring in all of our matching dies and we'll run that through our die cutting machine several times and we'll have lots and lots of pieces for our scene. This cardstock is, I don't even know what it is, I got it from my stash, but I use that scenic border die, the grass, and cut it out a bunch of times and they're all different lengths because we're going to layer that up on our card panel. Our card panel actually measures three and a half inches by eight and a half inches because this is going to be a slimline card. I've pulled out some Distress Ink in the color Forest Moss along with one of my Trinity Stamps blending buddies and I'm going to just blend all over the grass. This will just add a little bit of depth to your scenes and uh, rather than just having it be like a flat color. You could do it that way and that would be fine, but I really wanted to add some depth to it. So I'm just blending that there on my glass mat. You'll notice I even grabbed some of the color that's on the glass mat and I bring that in. Once I've kind of decided how that's going to be arranged on there, I'll take some liquid glue and I'll adhere that down to my panel that I have. And obviously they're overlapping a little bit. They're, you know, sticking off to the side and that is not an issue because we're going to trim it down later. But this is just a fun way to kind of, if you make them a little bit bigger, you can move your grass from side to side and see which way you think would look best. So that is what I'm doing. And then I'll add that one last little panel down at the very bottom. And that also gave us an odd number. So we have five blade um, grass borders on there. And I'm gonna take that and put that inside of my guillotine trimmer and I'm gonna trim off those excess edges. but I couldn't leave it that way. I definitely needed to bring in that forest moss again. So I'm gonna just ink up all those edges, just blend around, just add something, you just need it. And so I'll just blend all the way around this panel. Now in this panel, it goes on the front of my slimline card base. It is going to cover the entire front of that card base. I don't think that there's an actual particular set size for um, slimline, but that tends to be the one that I choose. Now the fun part is just choosing how you're going to do your scene. And once I've decided how I want that scene to be put together, I'm actually going to snap a picture. I know there's other ways to do it, but for me, this is the easiest way. I took everything off and then I'm going to put this panel into my splatter box. I'm going to grab out my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors Gold inks. These are very opaque. I have these around mostly for splatter and I love them. I've had them for so long. Uh, and I love it. So I just add a drop of water to the blue gold color and then I'm going to swirl that around with my paintbrush just to get that paint activated. So it's blue gold. 
and that seemed to be the one that matched the best. And then I'm going to take that and just kind of stick it on the edge of a um, stamp block, and then that way I can splatter, splatter, splatter all over that background. And it doesn't look like much right now, but it sure has a lot of shine and shimmer, and I'll show you here in a second. So take a look at that. It's really, really pretty. It's still a little wet, so I am going to hit that with my heat tool to make sure that that is dry before I adhere any of my pieces to the front. And then I'll pull out my camera so that I can start gluing down all of those pieces. And I'm not concerned that some of those pieces are going to be sticking off the side. Um, you could leave it that way if you wanted to hand your recipient your card, just hand them, you know, without putting it through the mail. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is trim off all of the excess. That doesn't really bother me, because I actually do like when it does that. It gives the, the eye this illusion that there's more going on outside of the card. So I kind of like doing that. I like it when the pieces head off the page a little bit. So we'll adhere down our little bunny burrow. Notice how the bunny burrow, when you use the die, it'll stamp out or cut out the window and it'll also cut out the door so that the door can open, which I think is one of the most clever things. I'm going to stick the window back in there and then I'm going to take my little bunny and I'm going to put my bunny inside the door like he's or she is coming out to greet the little mice. And then we're just going to randomly keep putting our mushrooms all over the place. I love this color palette. It just seems to say like, okay, we're heading into fall. <laughs> so um, I just, oh, I love it. And it's so fun to build these little scenes. Sure, it takes time to do all that coloring, but I certainly don't mind. And I'll get all of my little pieces adhered down. Some of them are a little bit different than what the actual picture is, but not too much. And I do need to leave some room for a sentiment. So I've popped all those down. I'm going to take one of those little mice and stick him behind the grass, like he's coming to meet the little bunny. And then we're going to move on to doing the same thing on the inside. I have so many excess pieces that I figured we might as well decorate the inside, because if you've watched me at all, you know I love doing that. So that's what we're doing. We're building a little scene on the inside too. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of room to write to your recipient. And then we have to stamp our sentiments. So I grabbed the sentiments from the A Sentiment for Almost Everything. I love this sentiment set. It's got, it really does have a, a sentiment for almost everything. I stamped down onto some Raven cardstock using my Versamark ink after I used my anti-static powder bag on it. And then I covered that with some gilded embossing powder and now I'm just heating that till that is smooth and melted. And then when that's all ready to go, I'm going to trim this down using my guillotine trimmer. This is, re well, as of now, like my favorite way to trim up my sentiments. I'm going to put two of those sentiments on the inside. I had to use Have a Mice Day. That one came from the Mouse House sentiment set, or uh, the Mouse House set. Uh, there are no sentiments with the bunny burrow, um, which doesn't bother me because I love to combine sets. I think that's one of the fun things about stamping. And then I'll trim off all those little excess pieces. But we're going to add to our scene, keep putting little pieces in there. And it's just so fun. And then for our outside panel, we're going to trim off all the excess there as well. And we're going to put our um, sentiment on the outside also. That says we make a great team. And I thought this would be perfect since I teamed up with Carrie today. We do make a great team. <laughs> and uh, I love that. So then I'll trim off that excess and then I'll glue this panel down to my card base. I didn't add any embellishments to this card. I know you're surprised, but there's a lot going on here, so I didn't think it necessarily needed it. I did, however, make a matching slimline envelope. I know you're shocked. I used the slimline envelope die that Trinity has, and I also made that out of some tonic warm dahlia specialty paper. Fits in there perfectly. And there you have it. So as I said, this is a part of a collaboration, so I'll have Carrie's uh, channel linked down below so that you can head on over and check out what she did. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Thanks for stopping by.